In this video, we will be looking at topic five of GCSE chemistry, and that is energy changes. Here are the subtopics we'll be looking at throughout this video. And as always, these notes will be available to buy on my Etsy page, which is linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. First of all, we have exothermic reactions. In an exothermic reaction, energy exits the reaction into the surroundings. That's a very easy way to remember it, and I would highly recommend making a note of it like I have here. Examples of exothermic reactions include burning fuels in a combustion reaction or acids plus alkalis in a neutralization reaction, which we would have learned about in the last video. Real life uses here are hand warmers and self-heating cans. So effectively, anything that kind of gives off heat is an exothermic reaction. As you can see with my diagram on the right hand side, we've got our reaction happening in the middle and energy is leaving the reaction going to the outside. On the other hand, we have endothermic reactions. It's effectively exactly the same thing, but rather than energy exiting the reaction, energy is entering the reaction. And again, would we'll definitely make a note like this, endothermic and energy enters the reaction. Examples here are thermal decomposition and a very specific example that I found in the book of citric acid plus sodium hydrogen carbonate. There aren't actually many endothermic reactions, so I think if you remember definitely thermal decomposition, you should be okay for the exams. And real life uses for this are sports injury packs, so like those ice packs that kind of you pop them and they all of a sudden go really cold, that's an endothermic reaction. And again, we've got my diagram on the left hand side this time. You've got your reaction happening in the middle and energy is entering the reaction. Within exo and endothermic reactions, another useful thing to know about is bond energies. So the way on a scientific level that an exo and an endothermic reaction work is specifically to do with how they break and form bonds. So starting on the left hand side with exothermic, you've got two separate atoms and a strong bond is formed which actually releases energy. You don't really need to know much more than that to be honest. Um, and again just a couple bullet points to summarise that at the bottom. And on the right hand side endothermic reactions break a bond which needs energy because to break a bond is not just an easy thing to do. You need energy for that. And that just simply breaks the bond into two separate atoms. And again you can see summarised at the bottom the energy enters the reaction from the surroundings, which makes it an endothermic reaction. Another thing that you need to know about are reaction profiles within exo and endothermic reactions. This is simply just a kind of energy graph that shows how the energy changes throughout the reaction. So starting on the left hand side with the exothermic reactions, the reactants have quite a high energy level at the start of the reaction. But because, as we know from exothermic reactions, energy is released from the reaction, so when it gets to the products, the energy is actually much lower in the reaction because that energy has been released. On the right-hand side, we have endothermic reactions, and you'll notice that the reactants have a very low energy at the start. And again, as we know from endothermic reactions, that energy is absorbed halfway through the reaction. So the products will always have a higher energy compared to the reactants, and this is purely because of that energy that's being absorbed. Another little label that you might notice on these diagrams is the activation energy. The activation energy is literally just the amount of energy required to make the reaction happen in the first place. And that's what causes these graphs to go above the energy required before they start to drop off into the products. And again, summarised just nice and neatly at the bottom, exothermic reactions overall will lose energy and endothermic reactions will gain energy. And that actually sums up the end of this video and also the end of paper one. So if you've made it this far through the series, well done and I really hope this has helped. This video and topic has actually been a really short one, but I will see you in the next topic for the rate and extent of chemical change. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe for more.